Today I'm going to show you how you can create double-sided PCBs on your CNC with FlatCam. I'm going to walk through all the steps necessary to go from Gerber files to Reddit G-code files that can be handled by your CNC. And I'm also going to share some tips, tricks and settings for the best results. I'm using FlatCam version 8.993 beta. See the description of this video for how to download the latest beta version. If you're new to FlatCam, I recommend you also watch our video on how to create single-sided PCBs, where we explain a bit more about all the settings and options. In FlatCam, open your Gerber files. We're going to need the board outline, bottom layer and top layer. Then open your drill files by going to Open Exelon and selecting the file. To make it easier to see, I like to set different colors for the different layers. Right click on the bottom layer in the Project tab, set color and I'm going to select blue. I'm going to keep the top layer green and set purple for the board outline. The Exelon holes are already in red, so I'm going to leave them be. Then we need to prepare the layers so we can mill them on both sides of the PCB. Go to Tool and select Two-Sided PCB. But I first like to thank the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. When you have milled your PCB and are ready to order multiple of them, we can highly recommend JLC PCB. They offer great quality, fast production and fast delivery. And best of all, the price starts as low as only $2 for 5 double-sided PCBs. You can order directly from their PCB design software Easy EDA, or you can upload your Gerber files. If you're new to PCBs, the default values are often very good. Once your order is in, you can track it every step during the production, and even better, is that they frequently offer coupons with additional discounts. It is actually that easy and cheap to order high quality PCBs. You can find a link to JLC PCB in the description of this video. We need to turn the PCB over to mill on both sides. So we need to mirror one of the layers. We're going to mirror the bottom layer. Since we have to reposition the PCB when we flip it over, we need to create a jig on the CNC. We simply use a 1 cm thick MDF waste board that we secure to the bed of the CNC. The four other screws are for clamping down the PCB. By drilling positioning holes, we can, once the top layer is done, flip the board over, align it with the positioning holes, and then start milling the bottom side. This will make sure we accurately place the PCB in the correct position again. In FlatCam, we need to decide if we're going to flip the PCB on the X or Y axis. And we need to choose if we're turning it over like a page in the book or in its current position. Let's see what that means. We first try turning it on a point. Move the mouse to position 0, 0 in the plot area and hold down the Shift key while left clicking once. Then click the Add button. Click Mirror on the Gerber. By mirroring it on the x-axis, we flip it over downwards. Let's mirror it back to its original position and try to mirror it on the y-axis. Now it's flipping over to the side. In both cases, the traces are not only mirrored, but moved as well. We don't usually use this option, as it requires more space on the CNC bed. The bottom layer is in these cases on the opposite side of the 00, zero home point of the CNC. That means that the CNC will mill the PCB on one section of the bed. And when you turn it over, like turning a page in a book, placing it on a different section, the CNC will need to mill on that position. There's nothing wrong about that option. We just simply prefer flipping the PCB over in its original position, keeping all the milling in about the same place. And that can be done by selecting box. When we select box, we need to use a reference object to determine what perimeters it needs to stay within. So we select the board outline. We prefer mirroring the bottom layer on the x-axis. 
as our jig allows for more movement up and down than to the sides due to the clamping screws. Note that the traces are not meant to line up in the plot area. This may look strange, but it's correct. Since we're going to flip it over, these two holes are not on the opposite side of each other. Rather, it's going to be aligned with this hole, just as these two holes are going to be aligned. And we always mirror the exelon or drilling holes as well. This is because it's very important that you always create a height map of the PCB on your CNC for both sides. And if you have drilled the holes before you flip it over, you risk having the probing points end up in one of the holes. Then we're going to place the two alignment holes. First, select the diameter of the pegs you're going to use. Then select the points in the plot area outside of your PCB design by holding down Shift and left clicking once. Then click the Add button. Select the different points by holding down Shift again and left clicking and then Add. Click Create Exelon Object. Flatcam will now automatically create the opposite holes. When you now flip over the PCB and align the four holes, you will have a perfect alignment for both sides. We're done with the two-sided tool, so go back to the Project tab. Flatcam have now mirrored and aligned both the bottom layer and the Exelon drill file. And it has also created a new Exelon file for the alignment holes. We now need to create machine code or G code so that your CNC can create your PCB. If you're familiar with Flatcam, it's going to be business as usual, but don't worry, I'm going to run through the rest of the steps as well. If you want even more details about all the settings in this video, I again recommend you watch my other video on how to make a single sided PCB in Flatcam. First, we're going to mill the alignment holes. Select the Exelon and go to the selected tab. The cut set is how deep we're going to mill. We need to go through the PCB and a bit into the wasteboard as the pegs need to be in the board for alignments. My wasteboard is about 10 millimeters thick and the PCB is about 2 millimeters. So I'm going to cut 8 millimeters deep. And this needs to be a negative value as the CNC need to cut downwards. Multi-depth is for cases when you want to do the drilling in smaller steps to not overload the drill bit. Travel set is how high you want the bit to travel above the surface of the PCB. 2 millimeters is usually fine since the PCB is very flat. Feed rate set is how fast you want your drill bit to move down. Since I'm using a 3018 CNC, I can't set the spindle speed, so I'm going to leave it at zero. Set dwell if you need to allow for time so that the spindle will reach the desired speed. And move set is very important if you have a smaller set axis, so it will not crash into the top. Two millimeters is enough for me. If you have a drill bit that matches your pegs perfectly, just hit the generate CNC job object. But I don't, so I need to use an end mill. Select the diameter of the end mill and click Mill Drills. Instead of just drilling the holes, the end mill is going to move in a circle to mill the holes instead. Then the geometry object will automatically open. Set the same cut set as previously. But this small end mill cannot carve 8mm deep in one go. So I need to turn on multi depth. 0.8mm is less than half the diameter of the end mill. So that should be fine. Now the end mill is going to work its way down 8 millimeters at a time and mill the hole. Travel set is 2 millimeters. Set your feed rate for X, Y, and Z and the other settings as previously. Remember end move set. And click generate CNC job object. The CNC job object will now pop up in the selected tab. Save the CNC code and run it in your CNC software. Now that we're done with the alignment holes, we can disable the plot to not have it show up in the plot area. Right click and select disable plot. Next, we're going to isolate the tracks on the top layer. To make it easier to see, we're also going to disable the plot for the holes and bottom layer for now.
Click on the top layer Gerber and open the selected tab. We want to do the isolation routing, so click that button. We need to input the values for our VBIT as a new tool. For PCBs, I always cut 0.1 mm deep. On the 3018, it will cut through the copper layer and just a tiny bit into the fiberglass. By not cutting too deep, your bits will last much longer. The width of a V-bit at a certain depth can be calculated with a calculator under the tools menu. The bit I'm using has a point that is 0.2 mm wide and is 30 degrees. When cutting 0.1 mm deep, the total width of the bits at that depth will be 0.2536 mm. Add the tool. Passes is the number of times you want to mill around the tracks. But each pass will move a bit further away from the track, creating more isolation. Overlap is how much you want each pass to overlap the previous. 20% is our default value. We're gonna have two passes. Between two and three is gonna be enough for this bit. Click combine to have all the passes grouped as one object. Unless you want to change cut settings for each pass, always check this box. And click Generate Isolation Geometry. The new geometry object will now pop up, and you can see the isolation passes as individual red tracks in the plot area. Inspect the tracks to make sure they look OK, especially between tracks and pads. Set the CUD Z to negative 0.1 mm, Travel Z to 2 mm, I'm going to lower the feed rate to 100. And remember the end move said. Then click Generate CNC Job Object to create the G code. Make sure it looks good in the plot area and save the code. You're now ready to send a file into your CNC software to mill the tracks. But it's extremely important that you probe your PCB to create a height map first. Back in FlatCam, let's now hide everything related to the top layer and enable the plot for the bottom layer. Creating the isolation tracks is identical to the process for the top layer. Go to the selected tab, hit Isolation Routing. Repeat the tool process and passes, combine and click Create Generates Isolation Geometry. And again, repeat the process from the geometry object for the top layer and click Generate CNC Job and save the code. Now on the CNC, we need to flip the board over, align it with the alignment holes and clamp it down. And remember to create a new height map for this side of the PCB before milling. Now both sides of the PCB are milled, so it's just a drilling and cutout left. In FlatCam, hide the bottom layer and enable the plot for the excellent drilling and open the selected tab. Now for this CNC, there are supposed to be different sizes for the holes, but I'm just going to use the same bit for all. Select how deep you're going to drill. About 2 mm will usually make it through a PCB. Setting travel set to 2 and feed rate to 100 and end set to 2 mm and click Generate CNC Job Object. Save your CNC code and place a drill bit in the CNC and start the drilling. And finally, the last step is to make the cutout of the board. Hide everything but the board outline. Click on it and go to the selected tab. Click the Cutout Tool button. Select the size of your end mill and how deep you want it to cut. Around two millimeters will usually be deep enough. And since my end mill is too small to make it all in one pass, I'm going to use multi-layer and have it go down 0.6 mm every step. I want to cut it on the line, so I set margin to zero. Gaps are the small tabs that are not going to be milled around the board to keep it in place so that it doesn't pop out during the milling. Two millimeters is going to be wide enough gaps for this PCB. And since this is an easy rectangular shape, I'm going to leave it at four gaps and click Generate 
rectangular geometry. Click freeform geometry if your PCB shape is a bit more complicated. And you can even add manual gaps if you need to. This is covered in our single sided PCB video. Here you can see the gaps that are not going to be milled. Go to the selected tab and check your values. And remember and said. And set the feed rate. Generate the CNC job object and save the CNC code. Finally, load it into your CNC software and do the cutout. You have now created your double-sided PCB. Congratulations! Hope this video was helpful.